right, good evening, Tuckaho and everybody. Welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals for, uh, what is this, September the 14th, 2016. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and, and to, to the Republic for which, which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Nancy, please take the roll. Um, Member Gallo. Present. Member Scalzo. Present. Member Palladino. Present. Member Jackman. Present. Chairman Ringwald. Present. And have Member uh, Dan Lang. Present. Excellent. All right, the four, first order of business is we need to approve the minutes from a couple of meetings. And only members that were at the meeting are allowed, obviously, to um, vote on the approval or discussion. So the first will be the approval of the minutes of the June 8th meeting, 2016. Any members have any comments or discussion? Any comments or discussion from the public? Seeing none, let's make a motion to approve the meeting, uh, the minutes of the June 8th meeting. Again, if you were not here, you need to abstain. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. All in favor that we're here? Aye. Aye. Oh, I oh. apologize. Um, Member Scalzo. Uh, approve. Member Gallo. Approved. Member Jackman. Abstain. Member Palladino. Approved. You were present for June 8th. Oh, June 8th. I'm sorry. Approve. <laughs> okay. I thought it was the most recent one. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Now we need to uh, have a motion to approve the minutes of the July the 13th meeting. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. Any, any second? Second. Anybody have any discussion or changes to the minutes of the July 13th meeting? Seeing none, can you poll the board, please? Uh, Member Ringwald. Approved. Member Palladino. Approved. Member Daniel Lang. Approved. That's it. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, we have a pretty short agenda tonight. The Marbledale Road is adjourned. That's the gentleman with the storage containers that we had given uh, six months to come up with a resolution. He needs to come before us next month to see what he's going to do to become compliant. That brings us to 37 Lincoln Avenue. Do we have the applicant? Please step forward. State your name. And address for the record, please. My name is Gregory Gall. I represent my firm, Gregory M. Gall Architect, PC, 33 Heritage Hill Road, Tarrytown, New York. And why are you before us tonight? I'm here to uh, represent the owners of 37 Lincoln Avenue in their request for a variance for their property to build a deck on grade in their rear yard. And we require two variances a rear yard variance and side yard variance to the existing non-complying structure. So basically you're putting a deck over the existing stone patio that's there today? Yes, in the rear yard there's an existing concrete pad that is non-complying. Right. And the owners would like to put a deck or a raised structure approximately eight inches off the top of the existing concrete pad Mm -hmm. covering the existing concrete pad as well as additional a few additional inches to the side yard but not to the s side property line and as you told us previously there's egress along the side yard with the new deck going up yes there's no change to the existing egress from the rear yard at all there's no change to the access or egress as well as the width of the access or egress from the rear yard. Very good. Any board members have any questions? Yes, uh, basically what you're doing is putting, uh, we are mirroring exactly what's there now with the new deck. With different materials. Yes. And uh, a little extension towards one of the side, side yards. Yard. Correct. Uh, my, my question is, when was this existing deck installed it's not an, it's not an existing deck it's an existing concrete pad on grade okay when was this existing concrete pad on grade 
in the store. I have no idea. I mean, because that's my, my only concern about this is that we're not really sure, you know, when this happened vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, the zoning laws. Was this an illegal pad based on the side yards that we are just now legalizing because they're going to put something on top of it? If it's something that was built in 1910 before our zoning laws existed, I'm more comfortable with that. Uh, I'm just, just have questions as to when it was done. If it was done 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and the, the building department wasn't aware of it, and that was during the time that the, uh, the, the zoning laws were in, in place, then, you know, I have, is I have an issue with it. Other but than it was, that. It was probably built the same time as the non-complying house was built. Which was? Roughly. Oh, so it's an old. 1925. Okay, that's when my concern. When did the current owner purchase the property? Six years ago, and it was there in 2010? Yes. Thank you. And between the time they purchased it and this application for a variance, the owners of the property did apply for and receive a variance to do work on that property. Well, it does not have anything to do with the deck. But well, I'm just giving you some history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if the deck was not compliant before our it's, zoning it's, laws. It's, it's not a deck. It's a concrete pad okay, on I'm grade. Sorry. The concrete pad on grade. If it was placed before our zoning laws, then legalizing it or anything above it, which is what we're doing, is fine. It's just that if somehow it was snuck in uh, after our zoning laws and no one knew about it, then I have concerns. But if it was done back in the 20s, then uh, which is before our zoning laws were, you know, modified, then I'm fine with it. Based upon my professional observation of the house and the concrete pad. They were built at the same time. Thank, Thank you. you. Excellent. Any other questions? I have no concerns. It's a safe structure. It leaves egress from the property unchanged. So I'm. No, I would just also point out that the um, the house structure itself is right up against the uh, property line as well. Yes. So that's, that's this correct. is not uh, moving any closer to the property line than the existing house structure. So it's just one of the uh, lots in Tuckahoe where they're very tight, quite honestly. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I need a motion to open the public hearing on this. So moved. Second. Second. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak? Yeah. Hi. You can step up to the microphone, please. State your name and address for the record. My name is Thomas Soropoulos. I live 18 Highview Avenue right behind those people, which he say he have a deck over there. I don't see any deck over there. They had a deck when they first bought the house on top of it. And they, we were over here, and now we allow them to close it to make a room, which they did. Now they want to expand they should have bought a commercial uh, property and built it or whatever they wanted. Nobody bothered them. They can build it all the way to the city. I don't want them to come all the way to my wall. Or uh, one of my uh, neighbors over there did not get the letter either. And two of them I, I talked to, they got the letter. And Highview Avenue, about half a block up, got a letter. And next door to him is uh, the guy got a letter. And I got a, a letter, I had to sign for it. Can I ask uh, you? Register. Sorry, sir, can I ask you, are you concerned that they're gonna build additional structure, like an additional room yes. on the back of the house? Yes, yes, they're gonna, they're gonna do the same thing. They wanna get the permit, they built all the way to the edge of it, and pretty soon you're gonna see they start building. I mean, that's up to enforcement, that's correct? We're approving only for this on-the-ground the patio, and then you would have to enforce. If anything's done, we're going to have this on if record. If they get the okay, if they get the okay, they will eventually try to build. They should have bought a commercial property and do it. I do not understand everything. Yeah. They're trying to expand as the house was? No. They're trying to go further up more to the people. 
probably they want to come in to my place, you know, all the way to my place. How far is the setback from the? Yeah, what's the rear setback, Bill? Uh, it's supposed to be 25 feet, I think, and, and it's only 21 feet. So from four feet, okay. But you, you do understand what the gentleman's proposing to do, correct? He has a flat He's stone trying patio. He's the same thing. He had a deck on top of it over there. He closed it. He made it a room. This is going to be a ground level ground. He wants the permit in order to to build all the way. I don't know. Maybe he's trying to knock up the house and build the. Well, I can tell you saying sir. that he wants to extend his house. That's it. He wants the permit now. The, the permit will, only be, for the, the permit will no. only be for the deck, not to extend the house. And the city inspectors say to them, no. I don't know who's the inspector. Well, and sir, they would have to come back in here to apply for that. Oh, and I can yeah. tell you, we would not approve that. I can tell you absolutely we would not. Yeah, well, that. they say the city inspector told them no. Uh, the city knows about something else. The building inspector who denied them to issue, you know, that's what the letter say. The city knows better. And I stay with the city inspector. Anything else? Well, if I can tell you why the city denied this, Bill, could you, would you yeah. mind explaining why the city denied this? It was not because they were worried about him coming further back to your property. No. The, the problem is actually that side yard that's existing, correct? The very small gap yes. between their house the side yard and the fence. is like two and a half inches, and it required is nine feet. Right. So it's already an exist, that's, where that, that's already what the house is. The reason they were denied was not because they were coming um, um, towards your property with an additional structure, correct? Right, it's only the de on grade deck. Only the on grade deck, okay. Thomas, I just want to make sure you understand that. I want to go in the record that I deny them like the city inspector. Okay. Fair Thank enough. you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Anyone else from the public would like to speak? Hello, my name is James Marshall. I'm the, the owner of 37 Lincoln. I just feel like I should defend myself a little bit here uh, and, and clarify. When we moved in, well, when we bought the house um, five or six years ago now, we did an extensive renovation. And at the time, the house had uh, a sunroom on the back side that was enclosed. It, it may have been a, a, uh, a patio or something at one time, but it was enclosed on the second floor above the kitchen, and it was unheated, so we decided as part of our renovation to uh, make that a, a year-round space. It didn't extend the footprint of the house at all. We raised, the, the roof was flat. We raised it um, a couple of feet uh, inside, and I think that's what the, the gentleman was referring to. Uh, it didn't extend the house footprint in, in any way. And as far as our deck proposal is going, it's just a matter of uh, essentially putting a deck on top of the existing uneven concrete patio where we have no plans to extend the, the size of the house in any direction. Um, so, I, I just want to note for the prior gentleman, he stated that on record, he's on the record now is stating that he's not going to use this for any further expansion of the, pro of the, the house structure itself. So. He stated that on the record. We're not going to. Right. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. Anyone else from the public? Please step forward. State your name and address for the record, please. Sure. Mariana Seropoulos, 18 Highview Avenue, Tuckahoe, New York. Hi. Hi. Uh, that was my father, so I just want to explain. Um, so it's the side of the house that they want the extension, the extra um, the space. Well. Is that correct? Cover the existing patio. Plus some extra on the sides. Like, literally, no, I think. One minute. One minute. Please sit down. Yeah. Just a moment. Just a moment. You'll get a chance. You'll Thank you. Chance. Well, so, so if you want yeah. clarification, there's an existing patio. <clears throat> it's non-conforming now. It's too close to the side. It's non-conforming. The existing patio that's been there for 100 years, however long well, it's been there. I have nothing to say about that. All right, fair enough. And he, he, the gentleman wants to put a wooden platform above it. It's going to extend a couple more inches.
to the side, making it just a, two more inches non-compliant. That's basically what he's here for. Since it's non-compliant, he must come forward and ask for a variance. Okay. Well, I talked to both the neighbors bordering that house, mm -hmm. each side. Uh, one of them is fine with it, I guess, because I don't see him here. And the other house, they did not receive a letter at all. But unfortunately, he could not be here because his son had something that he had to take him to. So I was wondering why that person didn't get a letter in the first place. That doesn't seem, you know. It doesn't, I, and I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Bill, is a notice also placed on the property that they're appearing in front of the board? Yes, it's there. I saw it today. It's very hard to see. It's on a tree in the back. But anyway. I noticed it today. So it was publicly posted and visible from the street. I only noticed it today. I go by there every day. Sorry. Okay, so hold on, hold on. We're going to have you wait for a little bit, and then we'll have you respond if we could let her complete it. Okay, her. so that was my first concern, that the person next to him didn't get the letter. Um, so we've been there 25 years, and I, I do know that the asphalt is there. But um, I just stepped outside and called my mother, who has the memory of an elephant, and she doesn't remember there being any asphalt there. And we've been there 25 years. Or whatever you call it. I don't know, asphalt, cement, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Well, she doesn't recall it. And she's very on memory. I know it's just whatever hearsay, but trust me, she remembers things. <laughs> anyway, so uh, you know, so that's the second point. Well, can I ask you? Yeah. Uh, what What's your kind of concern here? What are you worried about? I'm just uh, just in general. Oh, we're worried. That, that, you know, coming closer to our property, we don't want that. It might ruin our view. You know, we don't want any changes. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Is, so what are you concerned about ruining your view as far as, um, are you worried they're going to build a structure there or what are you worried about? They might. They say no now, but how do you know? In well, five, they, ten years, you know? Well, they're on the record saying they will not. That, so that would okay, weigh. But, uh, they can't change their mind in ten years? And they would have to come they in front of the board and that. Okay, and then you approve it just like you approved the uh, upstairs, which we had no problem. We attended that meeting and approved it ourselves. We said, sure. We had no problem with that. But well, you have to understand it's also hard for us to say, well, there's a possible chance someday, 15 years down the road, you're going to come back in here and try to build a structure. That's very difficult for us to. They're asking for what, in our, in my opinion, my personal opinion, is a very reasonable thing that's not going to be in your view. It's going to be on the ground. It's going to be something there is already there, which is a kind of, I'm assuming, rather ugly looking concrete. So it's going to look a little bit nicer. It's not going to impede your view. And it's you not going to. You don't know, in five years, he might say, oh, I want to build. And he might, but and it's hard for us right to, to make those decisions on conjecture, right essentially, that if, if he does something in the future, we have to, you know, that's, but, that's very hard for us to kind of. But if he would want to build anything else, he would have to come to this board for approval. Yes, but, you know, you you'd just, probably approve it just like. No, 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 balcony upstairs. no, 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 no. We take into consideration a variety of uh, factors. Uh, one of them is the five-prong test, which we are well schooled in. So just because we approve something that uh, is just right on top of what's existing doesn't mean we're going to automatically approve anything that they may want to build in the future. Well, in any event, I think it's going to, you know, what? ruin uh, my view. How would it affect it if, if it, it's just a little bit above what's there now? Um, if the inspector said, no, for a reason. There must be a reason. But because that's okay. He's a professional. That's, and that's why. His business. But that's why. No, no. He's a professional, and what his job is to interpret the law, and our job is to decide whether a person is granted a variance. It may come a day with you with your property where you need a variance because the laws were the houses were built a long time ago, and the zoning laws were changed, and many many people when they want to do something require a, a zoning variance. Mm -hmm and they come to this board. And what we have to determine is whether there'll be a, a dramatic impact to the neighbors, a change, which is dramatically affects you and your other neighbors. And that's why we listen to people like you. And we have to determine whether that impact is egregious and is going to really hurt you or whether the benefit to the applicant. 
is outweighs the detriment to you. Yeah, I understand. But why did the inspector say no then? Because it's non -compliant. Because it's non-conforming. The entire house, for example, even if they weren't building a deck, let's say they just wanted to, a um, bad example, replace a piece of siding on the side of the house, or who knows, fix something on the side of the house. The entire house is already non-compliant because it's right up against that fence. So technically, by the book, he has to say you're non-compliant because the structure's already so close to the edge of the property. But it's always been that way for 100 years. So it's almost a technicality where they have to come in and say, you know, look, we're already this close to the fence. We're just changing what's there right now. Does that kind of make sense? So we have a lot of these, actually, where people come in and say, look, I'm not getting any closer to my neighbor. I'm not getting any closer to this neighbor. I'm just doing something, but my house is already too close to the property. And I can't, you know, pick up my house, obviously, and move it. So a lot of it's just based on the kind of technical zoning uh, language that we have versus these, like he was saying, these very old structures that were built back when people didn't care that they were right on the property line. So but well, we so appreciate your comments. And, you know, it's something that when this does come back, if they try to do a structure, that would be taken a lot more seriously when you come back and you said your comments. And obviously, I don't think anyone would approve this going further back. Just to so the point that we don't remember that asphalt being there, that doesn't make a difference for anything. Oh, there's nothing no, your concerns, all your concerns, uh, I would just say all your concerns are very valid and we appreciate them. And, uh, you know, I, I can assure you we're not going to vote on this tonight. And it's, it's especially concerning that some of your neighbors say they didn't get noticed. So, yeah. you know, I, I would assume. We'll make sure your neighbor gets the notice. And yeah. we'll uh, keep this hearing open so we can hear from other people. Uh, Next week, Is that, would that be correct? One last sure. question. What is um, the letter said some synthetic material being used? What is that? Uh, if you would like, we could have the architect come I mean, and describe that. Is that more flammable than a regular material? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll ask the architect to step up and explain right, what the you. material is. Thank you. Okay, I have a few photographs that I could show the neighbor. Please, um, if you actually, if you could put them on the board over. Put them there. on the board. There's some clips on there. Then we can zoom in on them, and the, all the public could see it. magnets or something over there poor gentleman okay. yep well, I don't think it's gonna he, he, he's doing it Thank you. So. Sorry. So this is the rear of the house, and this is the grass, and this is the concrete pad that is at the same level of the grass. They're not extending the building to the side or to this side or towards your property. The only thing that they are doing is putting a deck eight inches off the ground on top of this existing non-complying concrete pad. Is that clear? Well, the, in the locations we're building the support for the deck, we are removing the existing concrete pad and pouring footings to 42 inches below grade, which is the frost line for this geography. And then we're putting wood support structure tied to that concrete sonotube footing to support the deck. Is that clear? And it's not attached to the existing house. Okay? 
Could you could you address her specific concerns about uh, the the product that you brought in? Yes, the product versus? I brought in. For the record, the the denial, if, if I'm correct, is not because of the footings. The denial is not because of the quality of the material. The denial is because of the uh, the zoning laws, and that's what's really in front of us. I think that and the building department will, you know, has very strict, uh, you know, um, regulations and rules that they have to follow. The quality of the material is is really not in question. I understand your your your, your concerns, but the the building department uh, will follow through with that. It, we we do not approve or deny something based on the materials. But just to answer your question, it's a nationally known product called TimberTech that is used across the United States and in Canada for exterior decks and steps. It's a system similar to, oh, it's a system similar to many other synthetic composite materials, just as AZAC. Uh, it's just, just a particular company that the client likes the pattern and the color for. That's why it was chosen. Building inspector, do you concur? Yes. Uh, any other questions? Uh, no, just a uh, point of information. This is an open deck, correct? No rails, no... It's an open deck, similar level. to the concrete pad, right. just a few inches above it. There's no enclosure over it. There's no side railing or guardrail. So you can step off of it along this perimeter. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional, any additional questions or concerns from the public? Seeing none, you, you have more, you can step forward. If you could wait till you're up to the mic, please. Thank you. I don't know why you brought me over here. Do you? <laughs> The only thing you gonna you have your mind already. No, we don't. No. <laughs> the city, I asked the city, will they go over there and examine the concrete, how many, how it is, and I want the city to inspect it after they finish it. Will it be the same amount, or they will steal a little bit from here, a little bit from there, a little bit from there? In other words, they make it bigger than existing c cement is over there. Bill, Bill, can you explain your uh, permitting process and your review process both uh, before construction, during construction, and post construction? Yes, the state requires that we do certain inspections prior, during, and after construction. And it uh, has to meet the requirements of what the approved plans show. So you will confirm that it matches the plans they've proposed to us tonight? Correct. Thank you. Will they allow me to go measure it myself to be satisfied for it? <laughs> no, I, no, I'm it's, not uh, left. It's not, a, that's not an issue. I have a problem sir, with his wife. That's, I have a problem with his wife. Sir, that's between no, you no, and no, no, no. the applicant. That has nothing to do with this board. They can't allow you to go on his property. So that's between the two of you. No, I, 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 if the court allowed me. This isn't the court. This is the <laughs> whatever. <laughs> It's a private no, they're, property. They're, it's not in their purview. To, they, they're not allowed to allow you. Uh, in other words, you will pick up here and Mr. there. Mr. Williams will, will be on the property, and he'll do the measurements and make sure it's in conformity with their plans. And we can certainly have Mr. Williams come back after it's completed, if it is approved, and, and talk to him about no, what he I found. Don't, I want the city to go over there and measure the old one, and I want to be satisfied the city let, him, let me know that uh, they did that, and they will do it after they finish. And as was stated, that will be done, and that will be a permanent part of the record. And you will, you will be able to view that here in Village Hall. So to answer your question, yes. 
It will be taken care of before, during, and after, and then it will become public record. Okay, I want to know about it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Any further uh, questions? Anyone else from the public on this issue? All right. I'd like to make a motion to keep the public hearing open until next month. Second. I second that. All I'm in sorry. favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. So just to be clear, this means that the public hearing remains open. The neighbor who maybe did not receive a notice that could not make it tonight possibly can make it next month, and we can hear from them as well. And if you have any additional concerns, you can bring them up next month. Okay? Mr. Or write Chair, a, or write a letter the, to the uh, clerk. The notices in Mr. Williams' office to see what happened with that neighbor and why the uh, neighbor didn't receive it or if it was sent and it's just never signed for. We'll, we'll figure out what happened. All right. Excellent. Okay. Do we want to draft it? Talk about draft resolution. Or? Well, I think that uh, what, what we can say is that uh, barring any uh, news, even though I did have uh, concerns about the age of this uh, existing platform, that barring anything dramatically to uh, view us, I would, uh, you know, lean towards uh, being in favor of this project. The hearing will remain open. We'll make our decision after the public hearing is closed next month, not any time before. All right? The second item on the list is um, 397 Columbus Avenue. They're looking for an area, area variance for an addition of the rear of the building. Is the applicant here? Yes, I am. Uh, Leonard Brandis, Brandis Architects to Spencer Place, Scarsdale, New York. Thank you, Mr. Brandis. And why are you here? I'm here representing the lead builders uh, to improve this building that exists. It's an existing eight-family non-conforming building on a very small lot against the train tracks. Uh, the building itself was built uh, early 1900s, way before any of the codes, zoning codes, and anything else. I believe originally as a four-family. Then was at one point it looks like it was a 16-family. Now it's down to an eight-family and. As far as I know, all the records show that as an eight-family uh, building right now. There are extra doors in the hallway, but uh, <laughs> we will be closing those up. Uh, the existing house has eight one-bedroom apartments. Our proposal is to enlarge the second- Excuse, excuse me, Mr. Brandis, I don't mean to interrupt you. Um, fellas, people in the back, would you, uh, two things, would you take your, your off there and, and have your conversations in the hall, please? Thanks, Lynn. So the existing uh, building has eight one-bedroom apartments. The upper apartments are very subsistence in terms of size. They're only about 450 square feet each. We'd like to increase those to meet more of a state code which at about 650 square feet each. The total improvement would be about 869 square feet for the two floors and adding, but we're not, no longer adding additional ponds. Once again, we're not adding additional services required by the village. We're not adding additional bathrooms and things like that. We're just adding more square footage to make these more usable apartments. The building has been in disrepair for a while, uh, it has been maintained well, and my client just bought this property and wants to renovate. There are several additions that have been put on in the back over the years. And, none of, and they're all in bad shape and there's leaks. We'd like to make it more uniform, make a much better look to the space, and just to maintain, once again, eight bedrooms. Uh, come up. I have photographs I'd like to pass to the board sure. of the house and the neighboring houses. Uh, the neighboring houses, especially across the street, you'll notice some very tall houses and they loomed fairly high. Uh, we are not going to be raising the house very much. We were looking to raise the house about three and a half feet, four feet maximum. Uh, we're still staying within code of 35 feet, so we're not going to need a variance for that. Uh, the variance that we do need is for the area itself that the, is non-conforming. Uh, existing FAR is non-conforming, so it's going to, instead of being 0.5, we're going to need 1.77. Right now, it's about 1.56, so we're increasing the FAR but we will be maintaining, once again, the size. 
Uh, I have here photographs, uh, drawings rather, of the facade. The front facade, the change is really in the roof, and then we are raising the chimney up a little taller as well. I don't think you can actually see that from the front, but that is the only change in the front. From the back, where there are dormers and little shed roofs and no windows in a lot of these shed roofs, we are going to change those out and create a new uniform space with new apartments. We weren't planning on doing many changes on the basement and first floor apartments except renovating them, changing the kitchens out, changing the bathrooms. But the other floors really need quite a bit. And so on the second and third floors, if you look at the side elevations where you're going to see most of the change, where you could see all the conglomeration of roof lines that have been added on over the years, we're going to <coughs> unify that into a much better looking building and create a much safer and easier to maintain building as well. For example, in terms of the apartment units right now, uh, this is the second floor. There has been additions, additions put on here for bathrooms and closets, and there's no windows in the back there either. So it's not like there's, it hasn't been done with any expense. And it's only two rooms right now, and they're very tight. Uh, 11 by uh, 12 is the basic room for living and eating. So it's, it's not very big spaces. The new apartments that we're planning on would have a new entryway, so you can have a full living room, a kitchen eating area, a bathroom separating the two areas into the bath into a bedroom. So we're now creating a more usable space. Hopefully it attracts more usable people. <laughs> we'll be able to rent uh, the apartments easily without any issues. And that's basically where we are. Thank you. Any questions from board members? So basically, um, sorry, what you're doing is extending the second and third floor to the footprint of the first floor in the basement. Actually, it's like squaring off the building, not right. increasing it in any size, but just extending it out to the same footprint. Right. We're not extending any, we're not adding any impervious surfaces to the property. We're just expanding the upper floors to create livable, and, more reasonable And what apartments. you're doing is increasing the size of the rooms. You're not adding any Correct. additional rooms. And just for the public, the what's at the rear of this property is the train tracks. There's nothing, there's Correct. no housing or anything behind the, the property. Correct. And all that addition is in the rear, basically. Yes, this is all the front basically right. stays. You only see the roof change a little bit, right. the roof lines change a little bit. Thank uh, you. I had, I had one question about the basement. Bill, on the plans, I, I noticed there's only one window on the right side of the house for the basement. Is that to code once they're finished with this? Does it have enough egress for a basement apartment? Well, if they make any changes, we'll look at it. But right now, if there's no proposed changes, whatever there can exist. Okay, so they, the, the only changes you've reviewed are the ones going on to the second and uh, third right. floor. Okay, thank you. The apartments uh, in the basement, by the way, do have direct access from the outside. So they're not going through the building. They're going from the outside on each side of the building to get to them. They have doorways on each side here. So that's their egress. So this is an area variance that you're seeking? Uh, is Correct. That, uh, yes, not a use variance or... The parking variants, do we need any? There's no parking there existing now. So we're, we're staying. Not changing the number of occupants. We're looking at the same number of occupants. I see. So it doesn't affect parking. Right. And the height variance, you said? No height variance. No height park. variance. We're meeting state code with that and the, and the town uh, zoning code on that. Okay. Um, anyone else? Um, my only uh, question is, is Mr. Brandis, uh, Brandis is the, um, do you feel that the, uh, that this project, should it be approved, would be completed in, in a timely fashion based on your experience with this Absolutely. developer? I've worked a number of times with this developer and I can't get the drawings out fast enough for him after approvals. Uh -huh. So he likes to get them done quickly. Uh, the seminar is uh, you know, a lead corporation. They uh, have really done a lot of good work that I've seen and I've worked with them on. So I'm very confident they'll do this work quickly and competently and improve the neighborhood. That's what you say. Well, it's been my experience with them. But, um, I don't know what they did before me. You have some other uh, uh, people that you've represented that have taken our um, approvals and uh, shopped them, if so to speak. Well, that's I not just, you know, I much just, I can do with that. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, can I ask but the if applicant? Referring, but if referring to that uh, project on Yonkers, we are already moving along with bidding right now on that so we're, with what we're getting bids on the project right now bidding uh, to do what to, go to, to build it well it's a, it, 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 it well it affects me uh, 
as to whether or not it's 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 going to be completed. Can I ask the uh, applicant to come to the microphone? Hi, John Seminara, Five Middle Road, Bronxville. Mr. Seminara, last time you were before us was what property? Is it Marbledale? Um, yeah, I believe the houses. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And those were, I mean, to my recollection, those were finished quite quickly, and and there was no hiccups or problems, or you didn't have to come back to this board. Yeah, I think it was about six to eight months. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, I'd like to open the public hearing. Do I have a motion to open a public hearing on this? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, anyone from the public that would like to step forward and talk about 397 Columbus Avenue, please step to the mic, state your name and address for the record. Sure. My name is Tina Cataldi Kearns, and I'm at 395 Columbus Avenue. We are right next to the property. Um, our concern is we've lived there for 13 years and we've never known that there was, we knew there was a lot of m people in and out, but that there was eight apartments there. Um, and I'm, our concern is just our quality of life and also are other houses in the, on our block or in that area going to be able to make small little apartment buildings? Unless that's basically <laughs> sort of what it is uh, now and that's our concern. Um, and also when, you know, it says that it's a two family zoning um, in the paperwork and the file, it said it was a four-family. When did it go from a four to an eight? Um, I didn't see anything in the file. Sometime before writing, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, well, th so those are very legitimate concerns, first yeah. of all. So that's, uh, you know, we appreciate you bringing those up. Bill, do you know the history of the building? Can you uh, explain what you know from the record? I don't know the dates, but reviewing the file, we did find that it was an eight-family. As of what date was that? I don't remember. Okay. Was it eight family prior to any of these, uh, or, or the most recent? That's the wrong way to ask it. Has it been long enough before the, 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 the zoning r rules came into effect? Well, the zoning's been in effect since 1923. Is it prior to that? No, 19. I believe it was after 23. I would have to look at the applications, but we have applications that shows it as an eight family. I mean, I would say we had the same. <laughs> if someone came to us now and said, I want to turn my uh, single family home into eight one yeah, bedroom apartments, also, I don't think. And also, to the parking, and, and, and I don't want to give them a hard time by any means. I mean, I'm thrilled that they want to make the property look nicer. Mm -hmm. I mean, who wouldn't want their area to look nicer in their neighborhood? But it's just concerning if that's allowed in that home, or other homes going to be allowed to do the same thing? And then. Well, I don't speak what for is the it, What is your property, um, if you wouldn't mind? Is it a uh, one? It's uh, a two-family. It's a two-family. Yeah, that family. whole block on Conley's Avenue, I think, and maybe Bill, is, I think mostly all those homes there are two-family. Uh, further down the street from you is another three or four-family. Oh, okay. Side. Okay. So many oh. years ago, they were converted. Um, exactly when, it's hard to tell, but. Yeah. I just, I just don't. And you have children I have living three, there. Yeah, I have three small girls. Three great. Nice. And honestly, we've had a lot of riffraff in and out of that apartment building already, and I know it wasn't kept well, and I don't know who maintained it before that. So I'm just concerned. I didn't even know there was eight apart. Uh, you know, you look at the property. I'm sure Leonard said they're very small. Mm. There's always a lot of people, but I just want to make sure that this is, you know, are the homes in the area going to be able to, or you know, have eight families living in there or conforming their properties. Homes would need a use variance. Mm -hmm. Right. So, it's almost practically impossible to do. Right. So I just want to know how that one property was able to do that and other. Just so they build ago. around the same time my house was built. I think it's the same. So the, the problem we have as a zoning board is the house exists as it is today, right? And so it's very difficult to take away what they already have. So then the question, because then you could do it for everyone, right? If you take away what they already have and, and the zoning laws change all the time. Um, and so then the question is, what do we do with this property, right? And we, we have a developer here who wants to come in and beautify it, make it nicer, right. bigger, better, um, without increasing density at all, um, but maintaining with where it's at. And so- I just don't know how it got know. to that, because what I saw in the <laughs> We file, all do, yes. I saw in the file from 1935, it was a four family. So I'm just wondering how it got from the four family in 1935 to the eight family now and what you know it's, has it showed that it's a continuous issue in the village i mean that all these properties you know so much has gone on in 70 years i mean 
Right, but if there's documentation from 1935, I would imagine there'd be documentation going forward. No. There was documentation for an eight family. Okay. It is an approved. Maybe it's something it that is I an approved eight family. And like I said, I'm not. I don't want to give a hard time. I just want to know that you know that one, the one hot. I mean, we're like this close to it, so I mean, I can. I know what they're having for dinner every night. Mm -hmm. um, so. I just you know, for us, even maybe for our property, maybe something that we want to do in the future. We just want to know how that happened. It's sort of like this little apartment building in the middle of this area, and it's just you know, quality of life. There's ten, twelve parking spots there, and now there's eight families. Yeah. So how do people? As park? I mean, as Member Scalzo said, we're kind of limited in that it already is is, is yeah. there. There's really yeah. our. I have to look back at the file because I'm just right. curious how it got to the four families, the eight family, and if it went through the the right channels. I agree that's a concern, but at this point, what's facing us is he has an approved eight family. There's nothing right. we can do about that. Right. If he wants to, he could just leave the f property as is right now, right next to you, right. with these terrible little apartments, and as you mentioned, whatever you might call it, riffraff. <laughs> he could leave it that way, and he could leave it as eight bedrooms. Well, I understand. I appreciate so, him wanting to make it better. So, Absolutely. Right. So in essence, from our view, it's that you know, right. he's, uh, he's not changing it. He's leaving the same number of apartments, um, and hopefully improving them. So there's not much we can do about the eight apartment issue. Okay. I share your concern that a lot of these, yeah. how things got to the stage seem to kind of Maybe vanish in time. Maybe the town also reconsider about the parking because I have three kids. When they start driving, I don't know where we're going to be parking. <laughs> you know, Maybe something the town can look into, especially, I don't know if they're all filled now, but when they're all filled, it's, it's a problem. And it, again, that's another issue where it exists now with, with yeah. no parking. And yeah. it's, uh, when you have existing, one of the things is in an old village like we have, this is a problem that faces this zoning board all the time. Mm -hmm. And there may come a day when you decide to buy something and you'll find that that house is old and it has uh, a lot of uh, situations which you may need to come to this zoning board for assistance in, in explaining that, yes, the house was built a long time ago and we need uh, some space to make more parking. Uh, and you'll come to us and... and, and so this is not a, a modern village, meaning that it wasn't developed in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And therefore, there's these complications constantly. Um, one of the things, you know, as a member of this village for a long time, uh, I uh, completely understand your concerns. And I live right up the street, and parking is a, a major concern. And... Uh, it is what it is. I mean, it is what it is. And uh, what we have to hope for in this uh, village is that the uh, developers that take on a project are people who are stand-up people and uh, are going to do the right thing for the community. And uh, as I had questioned this developer before, they didn't drag their feet on prior uh, developments. I think it's... I'm guessing the address is, uh, it's, it's, it, they did some houses recently on Marbledale between Fisher and, and, and uh, Lincoln, and it was a burned out house in an empty lot, so. Yeah, I'm not questioning. No, 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 but I, 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 I would urge you yeah. to, to drive by those two properties, because I follow up as a member of the zoning board and watch what the developers do, and some do just do nothing and shop. Our approvals and I think my more of my concern is too is that that other homes are not going to be faced with this so we're going to have like you know mini little apartments all over the block it would be that won't different. happen yeah. now <laughs> it would be not, very that doesn't concern, happen now but yeah. it would be very difficult if not impossible yeah. to do that at this point I, i'm still question how it even happens in this home so but, are uh, we yeah but <laughs> it, 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 it was what it was it is what it is and there's nothing we can do existing is existing before the zoning laws were changed, those people are what's called grandfathered. Right. No, I understand the terminology for that. But like I said, just in the file. So all we can hope for is that developers that come in and take these older homes that are grandfathered mm -hmm. and do the right thing. And again... I know he will. I, 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 you know, I'm confident that he will do that. So am I. You know, but those are our concerns. Well, thank you. We thank you and we appreciate it. And we will take them into consideration when we're making a decision on this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else from the public? Mr. Semenero, Mr. Semenero, want to come up? Did you want to? No? Okay. All right. Well, we're going to leave this open. I'd like to have a motion to keep the uh, public hearing open until next month. 
We have a motion. So moved. moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Excellent. All in favor, aye. 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 <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Is there any further business? Seeing none, I'd like to make a motion to close this meeting. So move. All in favor? Second. Aye, aye. We have a second. Oh, you're making the movie? Okay, I'm sorry. Did you make the motion? Yes, and so there he... was a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Good night, Tuckahoe.